uh, to go against that ebb of uh, of what the status quo is, and gee, I would not wish that on anybody. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see uh, who steps in, but uh, what uh, what I just did want to say here is that uh, Arsene Wenger stepping away from the uh, from the game that's that's a blow to uh, that's a blow to English football. Um, I hope that uh, I hope that he does continue doing something in the uh, in the world of football. I think you know he could probably become uh, a national team manager at this point. I don't know what uh, what nation. I don't think that uh, I believe it's Didier Deschamps in front of in in charge of France right now. Like I don't think he's going anywhere until at least after this World Cup. I mean, like after this World Cup, there's probably going to be some sort of post that'll be open that'll maybe be interesting to an Arsene Wenger, which would be I think I think that that would be a good place for him. You know, he's uh, he's got he doesn't have to worry about trying to uh, trying to affect um, you know trying to affect a, a locker room so much as he has to put together a team and try and uh, and try and get together a team in sort of a short uh, short period of time based on like the entirety of uh, of a nation's uh, nation's talent pool i think that that's maybe uh maybe the direction that i would go if i were in uh, in wenger's shoes um in any case um all the best to arsene wenger 22 years i think he did uh, i think he did all right for himself one of the one of the great minds in the footballing world and, and you know the end the end of an era in in a lot of ways so anyhow uh that's going to do it for that after this little break we're going to talk about uh, american politics because i just can't help myself apparently So, uh, of course, this uh, this past weekend, um, Barbara Bush was laid to rest. She passed away at uh, age 92. Saw a couple of pictures um, from the funeral. I didn't actually watch any of the coverage or anything like that. Um, of course, uh, very well attended funeral. Of course, she was very uh, very well loved, uh, well loved woman. Um, you know whether or not I, uh, I agree with her um, her husband or her son's politics. Um, she was a she was a she was a well loved figure, I think. And uh, and you know what? I think that uh, I think she'll be missed by the people who miss her. Saw a few pictures, like though, like I said, uh, in attendance at the funeral uh, were, of course, both uh, both George Bush's, um, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, uh, Melania Trump. Barack and Michelle Obama, uh, and I uh, saw a picture of like you know just sort of that group, um, the uh, the former presidents and the uh, the first ladies uh, all together uh, in sort of a group group photograph. Um, man, I cannot imagine that there will become a, some sort of time where you know it's, it's it, the, in this picture um, George Bush has his arms around both Melania and uh, and and Hillary. Um, and I, I think like you're, you're never going to see every, and everybody's smiling, right? Like, and there's a certain amount of like, you know, it's, it's, it's a public photograph and blah, 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 but I just don't see a situation, uh, we're ever going to see that with, uh, with president 45, uh, in a similar sort of photograph, uh, down the line. I just don't, uh, I just don't predict that happening. Um, and I don't know, like maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm projecting, uh, my own opinions here, but uh, I just don't see him getting invited to uh, to those sorts of parties when he doesn't hold the office anymore. Um, hard to say. So speaking of uh, U.S. politics, speaking of uh, of uh, President Trump, uh, James Comey's memoirs looming large in the news this week. Um, I, I got to be honest; I'm probably not going to uh, probably not going to pick this one up. Um, honestly, it seems to me from, uh, from all of the press, from the press junkets, from the, uh, from the interviews that Comey has done, this seems like a, um, 
You like you remember you remember that uh, that book that O.J. Simpson released? You know, if I did it, <laughs> it, it kind of feels like that. Uh, it kind of feels like he's trying to justify um, his own actions more to himself than to the American people or to the people of the world. Um, kind of feels like uh, it's maybe trying to uh, trying to paint himself in a sort of a a, a tragic hero type of light when realistically his actions. Uh, Picked the president. Um, I think that that's uh, think that that's fair to say. Whether or not you uh, whether or not you believe that um, that Hillary um, being uh, investigated by the FBI uh, was the uh, was the just and right thing. Whether or not you believe um, that him not releasing uh, releasing the fact that uh, that President Trump was also under FBI investigation at the same time. Um, to the public, as he did with Hillary, you know, just days before the election. Um, I think, like, whatever you believe, the choice that he made to release information when he did about the candidate that he did was inherently a political choice. It was inherently a choice where, you know, whether or not he meant to, he he picked he picked Donald Trump to be the president. Um, I don't know. Like, it's, it's hard because, like, I want to... Um, I want to be able to read interesting uh, things about this presidency and about uh, about how the world is sort of uh, sort of reacting to it. But um, like, give you an example. I, I did get my hands on a copy of um, of that Michael Wolff book that was released a few months ago that nobody remembers. Like nobody's talking about that book. It was all that we could talk about for like three weeks, and then nobody's talked about it since. Um, just really fascinating that that's how quick this is turning around. Um, I haven't had a chance to read that myself just simply because like, I, I, I don't know how interested I am in just having what I suspect to be true, just reinforced by like, what's probably a slightly unreliable narrator. You know what I mean? Like it, it just sort of seems to me that like, this is the kind of, global history event that like we kind of need to look back on a little bit more retrospectively rather than doing like mid game breakdowns of, uh, of, of how the place have gone. Um, I think that, uh, I think that it's important that we keep on supporting good journalism. I think it's important that we keep on reading good journalism and, and sharing good journalism and, 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 you know, questioning, um, questioning the veracity of facts, you know, like actually digging into what the truth is, because of course, like there is just such like, Oh my God, you read the, uh, you read, like I've made the mistake like three separate times this week of reading the comments on a uh, news article shared on, uh, on Facebook or on, on online and uh, some other forum. And, God, it's always a mistake, and you you always forget how much of a mistake it is until you actually delve in. Because, like, realistically, like we're living in two separate worlds with two separate realities. When you have um, people who are taking uh, what the president's saying as wrote, and then people are saying, "Well, actually, there's a bunch of indictments here. This Mueller investigation is pretty legit. Like, we should probably follow up on it, maybe just a little bit." And you know, the the Trump fans, the MAGA fans, who are saying that you know, there's no collusion. He's never going to find anything, but just shut it down. Um, amongst those people who are allowing it to be shut down is, of course, our good friend, uh, the uh, the one and only Senator Mitch McConnell, um, who, like. Has he's he blocked? He's 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 suggested that he's going to block a bill uh, that would be put forward in the in the Senate. Now it would never pass the House as the House is currently sitting, but he's going to block a bill as it's currently sitting in the Senate uh, that would uh, that would give um, formalized protection to Robert Mueller, basically make him more or less unfireable. Um, and the reason that he's given is that there's no indication that the president has any plans to fire Robert Mueller. So there's no need for such a bill, except it's like literally what the president tweets every other day is that there's no collusion. It's a fake investigation. It's just a witch hunt. It's the worst treatment that a president has ever had. Blah, 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 blah. Um, man, like... Uh, you know, I said this the other the other week when uh, when 
when Paul Ryan, I guess it was maybe last week when Paul Ryan stepped down, like at least we know that Mitch McConnell is evil, but like, God, he sometimes takes a, takes a step and really, really shows it. Um, hard to say. Um, so what else is going on in the world? Well, I, I actually read this week, this is kind of old news, but I'm just, I'm just picking up on it now. Michelle Obama has a, uh, a memoir that's going to be coming out, uh, this fall in November, I believe maybe just in time for, uh, for midterm election season, maybe get the vote out a little bit, maybe get some more people uh, excited about voting in the midterms. We'll, we'll see. Um, I don't know. That's uh, that's one that I might pick up um, and, and make sure that I read. I really do uh, like Michelle Obama quite a bit um, as a public figure. I think she was a very good first lady. Um, I think it's uh, that's. I think it's a shame that she doesn't have any political aspirations of her own um, because I think that she would maybe even be a better president than her husband was. Um, Hard to say, but uh, I, I, that's that's maybe just the way that I feel. Maybe it's just that I'm a I'm a big uh, I'm a big Michelle Obama fan, and I think it's maybe uh, it's maybe more than uh, than due time for for a smart, um, well learned woman uh, to be taking the most powerful office in the world. But uh, you know what? We tried that, I guess, and it didn't really uh, didn't really ring out uh, ring out true. Um, yeah, like I said in the the beginning of the last section, though, um, I, I really do have to sort of budget my uh, my entertainment time quite closely, and it's got to be uh, got to be very uh, very aware of what I'm uh, what I'm spending my time on, and and really make sure that I'm going to enjoy it. So, like, I think that if uh, if I'm going to be picking up a book to read for pleasure, um, it, it, Michelle Obama's memoir is maybe going to take a uh, take a high point of precedence over over Jim Comey's. Um, that's uh, that's. That's that's about the long and short of it there, I think. And uh, that's going to be the long and short of it for this section on the uh, the American politics section. Um, how many times can I say section incorrectly in one sentence? God only knows. Uh, after this little break here, I'm actually going to share uh, some memories about that um, St. Valentine's Day massacre plot uh, to shoot up the Health Act Shopping Center. Um, maybe give you a little bit of history on that and uh, and what my memories of it are because there's kind of a kind of a, a weird connection to my life on that one so we'll, we'll get to that right after this So on uh, on Friday, Lindsay Savannah Rath, a woman from Geneva, Illinois, sentenced to uh, life in prison, chance of parole in another uh, seven years, based on uh, based on time served, uh, for her part in the um, thwarted plot to shoot up the Halifax Shopping Center here, just uh, just fifteen minutes walk away from uh, from where I sit and speak to you. Um. So needless to say, like this was uh, this was a really weird news story as it came up uh, when it did come up here in Halifax. The way that the story goes is that uh, Lindsay Savannah Rath um, was uh, was friends on Tumblr with uh, Randall Shepard and James Gamble. Um, Shepard and Gamble, both local Nova Scotia guys who uh, who were friends in real life off of uh, off of the internet, and they met up with uh, Savannah Rath online and they were all sort of uh, what's known I guess as Columbiners they were uh, real big fans of the uh, of the Columbine uh, shooters um, and sort of idolized and lionized uh, those two young men who of course perpetrated the uh, the very famous school shooting um, at the uh, at the Columbine high school Um so the way that the plan was supposed to go, apparently, is that uh, Svanrath and Gamble were supposed to go uh, to the mall, shoot down into the old food court, which is now, like, not even really there anymore, I guess. It's more just uh, more just uh, escalators now. 
Um, but they were gonna they were gonna shoot down there using um, a couple of James uh, Gamble's father's guns and uh, shoot down into the crowd. Probably take out many. I guess they were gonna have some uh, some Molotov cocktails as well, and then they were going to turn the guns on themselves once they were uh, once they were finished. 